a Nemesis Graham at mummy underscore fitness and this is Wednesday December 21st and we're here for a live workout. So what you're going to need for this workout are some weights. I have one kettlebell here that I'm going to use for everything. You can also grab dumbbells. My dumbbells, I just grabbed them from the garage about 20 minutes ago and they're frozen so I won't be using them because <laughs> the coldness hurts my hands. But you can use dumbbell or you can just use your body weight if you have no weights or get creative with weights. The workout is 40 minutes long. We have the circuit is 30 seconds of movement, 30, 30 times 3. So you're going to do two movements alternating every 30 seconds for 3 minutes and then get a 1 minute break. Then we're going to finish with a 4 minute tabata. So I'm going to get started with the warm up. For the warm up, if you have, this is a stick that was attached to my broom. If you have a stick, a dowel, a pole, something to kind of do a deadlift warm up with, that would be helpful. If you don't have a pole, I'll show you short your options. So we're gonna start with this, it's a hinge. So if you can find yourself a stick, you have three points of contact. I want you to connect it to the back of your head. To, if you're a lady, my bra strap is running here, so it should connect to your bra strap. If you don't wear a bra, then just push it between your shoulder blades, just below it. And then the third connection is your tailbone, three points of connection. And I want you to hinge, bend while keeping this bar connected. So we're gonna do it for 30 seconds. So feet under your hips, soft knees. Think about pushing your bum back, like there's someone directly behind you and you're trying to push your bum into them. You're just gonna hinge as low as you can, feeling for the stretch in your hamstrings, at the back of your legs, into your glutes. And so this is your hinge. If at any point the bar disconnects, then you've lost neutral spine. I want you to lift your body, find where that neutral spine is. Same here, if your head disconnects, you've lost neutral spine. We're trying to hinge while keeping our three points of connection. So 15 more seconds. I'm gonna show you another option. If you don't have a long pole that you can use, option two to get into that hinge is to go up against the wall. Here's my wall here. So I'm gonna stand about 10 inches in front of it. Now I want you to hinge and get your bum to touch the wall right behind you. So soft knees, again, feet under your hips and push your hips back like okay, there's a string pulling my tailbone, pushing me straight back and keep pushing your bum back till you connect to the wall or till you reach your range of motion. So this is here. If I relax my butt, I wouldn't get to that wall if I was in neutral spine. I'd connect, but low down. I want you to connect directly behind you. Your butt, my butt needs to hit my hands, not below my hands. And if you're doing your hip hinge, you're really going to feel it in the back of your legs and in your butt. You should feel nothing in your lower back. As soon as I relax my body, then I feel it in my lower back. This hinge is important because we're, our first exercise is a kettlebell swing, and a kettlebell swing is a really fast hip hinge, but I'll give you some options for your swings. Now we're going to move into squats, body weight squats. So feet, hip width apart or wider, by that I mean fine where your hips are, you either want your feet minimum underneath your hips. For most people it's easier if they go further than hip width apart. My squat is fairly wide, your hips tend to, your knees tend to follow the direction of your toes. So it can help to turn your toes out, so your knees go out. There's nothing wrong with doing a squat to his forward, but you have to be mindful to push your knees away from each other. So I'm gonna do, grab my timer here, and do 30 seconds of body weight squats. Bear with me. All right. Squat, hips go back and knees bend. seconds. This is time to connect your breathing to your body. Be mindful of your breath. I want you to try just moving with your breath, inhaling, down into that squat, exhaling, up in the squat. Now I'm going to take my hands, reach for the ground beneath me, stand up, reach up the sky on my tippy toes. Inhale down, exhale up. As you hinge, my chest is still going up. My squat is just getting deeper. I'm not relaxing my chest. 
curling down. Chest up. Relax and smile nicely. Oh, it's back. Uh, okay, Asha. Center, then to your left. Okay, you guys should. I'm doing a lot of work out right now. Go see your dad. It's, it's back. Now, relax a bit 
bit more and reach for your toes. So now you can allow that balance in your back. Still a slight bend in your knees, giving some stretch into the back of your legs. Curtsy lunges in 10 seconds. So curtsy lunges, stand in squat, your feet squat distance apart. Take, I'm gonna take my right foot, cross it behind my left, like I'm curtsying, keeping my hips facing forward, push your hips, my hip bones facing forward, push your hips backwards into the curtsy lunge. So show you from the side again to hinge, my hips go back, my chest isn't, my body isn't awkwardly upright. I'm hinging, sending my hips back, and my chest, my spine follows my hips. That front heel should stay connected to the ground. Three, two, one. Put your hands down, walk your feet back, and we're gonna end with five chest to floor push-ups. All the way, chest connects to the floor, and then come up. Or you can do that on your knees. Chest to the floor, come back up. That's two, three, four, and five. And rest. Make sure you have some water to hand. And we're gonna get started with the workout. I'm just gonna set my timer here. So it's 30 seconds of movement, back and forth between two movements for six rounds. So I'm going to show you the kettlebell swing. So you can do a kettlebell or a dumbbell swing. Level one, if you're not ready to swing, you can just work on that hip hinge. So level one, I'm going to take the kettlebell to your chest, or if you don't have a kettlebell or a weight, just hands across your chest. Slight bend in your knees, push your hips back. So imagine a tail a string right here, and it's push, pulling your tailbone back. So it's not pulling it down, straight back. If that's difficult, use a wall and push your butt side in front of the wall and we're going to find that wall with our tailbone directly behind you. Where? My butt's here, right behind me. I'm going to find my hands. I'm going to find the wall. Body weight, level two, grab a kettlebell, pull the across your chest, hug, and then hinge with that kettlebell. Find the wall, straight back. When I was showing someone in one of my classes, I stood behind her. That's her here. I just stood back with my hands here and I said, hit my hands with your butt. This is what you're doing. You should be feeling it in your butt, back of your legs. You can do that with a dumbbell. Here's my crazy cold dumbbell to your chest. Hips, I'm buying a wall. Or get the person that you're living with to cock a feel, find their hands. There you go, get into that stretch. That is your level one hinge. Level two is the kettlebell swing. We have two levels. So a lot of people swing the kettlebell incorrectly. I want to show you how to do it well. The kettlebell starts up in front of you. You don't pick it up, you go swinging, you drive it with momentum. It's in front, you're behind. Feet are as wide as it needs to be, your hands to get there. Because the kettlebell needs to swing between your legs. So your feet need to be wide enough to get the kettlebell between your legs. It's a hinge, soft knees, that string, find the wall, tailbone straight back, back straight back, and you're gonna reach for the kettlebell. Grab, grip it, start with an exhale. So a kettlebell swing, if I do this, my hands are soft, I'm not doing anything, and I send my hips straight back and straight forward, my hands move. This is a kettlebell swing, you're not pulling or push you're not pulling on that kettlebell, you're not pulling it up, your hips are driving it up. So from here, two exhales, this is a high tension swing. You're going to exhale to pull it in. At the top, you're going to exhale to push it down. Think about a kettlebell swing, no. We don't pull that kettlebell up, but we do push it down. Because if you don't push it down at the top, the weight is going to pull you down, and then you're not in control. And when we're strength training, it's about control without movement. There's strength in control. So I'll demo everything I'm saying. Feet hip width apart, soft knees, about back. You should be feeling it in the back of your legs, into your butt, not your lower back. Reach for the kettlebell, exhale. Wrist to zipper. Wrist to your zipper, then exhale, bring your hips forward, exhale, push it back. Wrist to zipper each time. So here's a demo. That's your kettlebell swing. You can also do a dumbbell swing. Everything is the same. Using a dumbbell, same setup, out in front of you. Part two, 
Russian twist or a big twist. Up on your tailbone, sorry, up on your sit bones. Tailbone lifted, rotate and tap. Exhale with rotation. Rotate and tap. Level two, hinge back more. Level three, bring those heels off the ground. Two, one, plank drag. <coughs> Breathe through it. Do not hold your breath. Think about exhaling. You inhale automatically. Your muscles just relax when you inhale as a response of their contraction when you exhale. That's to say that exhaling is active, inhaling is passive when you're exercising focus on your exhales. Don't hold your breath and it feels hard. So down, regress a level, stop, but don't hold your breath. There's a saying that if you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. 10 more seconds. Then we're into our last minute. Then we get a one minute break. Three, two, one, plank, dumbbell pass. Work at the level that you find challenging, but that you have control. When you lose control, regress. There's no shame in regressing. You build strength and the limits you can control. If you can't do it, then don't. Eight more seconds. If even this level is too hard, bring your knees under your hips to regress it a little bit more. Russian twist, this is your last 30 seconds. Oblique twist. more seconds than your one minute break. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Rest one minute. Next we have B stance or single leg deadlift. So grab your weight. You don't need your weight. B stance is a standard stance. So this is your option one. You're going to, the idea of this is to put the majority of the weight in one foot. So these stands, start with your left leg forward, right leg back, up on your toes, heel lifted. To deadlift, a uh, stiff leg and deadlift, remaining deadlift, so it's a hinge. I want you to hold the weight on the opposite hand of your supporting leg. So you're going to take your tailbone, back to the wall, straight back. Come to wearing the bottom of your hinges and then stand. 30 seconds per side. Second option, single leg deadlift, that bad leg goes completely up. It's still a hinge, your hips are still the one that are the lead of this movement. And start, E stands, or single leg. Whichever one is challenging, but you can control it. So bum back, keep pushing it back, back, back. Don't relax your lower back. As soon as it rounds a little bit, you're gonna feel it. If your back is bothering you, I guarantee you are rounding your lower back. Or single leg. If you're doing a single leg deadlift, there's no external rotation. By that I mean sometimes I see people deadlifting and they're doing this rotating out. Keep your hips parallel. If you can't keep them parallel to the ground, and with that hinge, regress. Come back where you're to your B stance, or even two feet completely planted. And work on that hinge. There's another option for feet planted and just hinge, but you'll be doing the same thing for three minutes. Switch legs. This is minute two. On balance on one leg, don't hold onto a wall. Just put that other leg down because your body gets strong and replicates the movement patterns that you train. So if you want to train strength and balance, you have to do things that challenge your balance and work to stabilize yourself. 
Rose, so your rose on your knees, knees behind your hips, tapping your hips. 
that you're lunging towards the heel. You must stay connected the entire time. So if your heel is disconnecting, coming up, send it back down. Your weight should be sit, sit your body weight back. You should be feeling it back of your leg and your butt, not in your knees. Three, two, one, switch sides. So here are my Cossack squats. A little bit low on this side right now. Each time, just challenge yourself to drop lower. As you get more of a stretch, you get more movement. You might just get more, I don't know words. Just things that are not accessible might become accessible the longer that you do it because your body's warmed up. Five more seconds and we're gonna to go to the other side. Left side again. Exhale up. You want it to pull the weight. I like to hold it in the drop dot hold. Eight more seconds, push into the heel of the leg that you're leaning towards. And switch to come up. Come in, keep your belly button gently drawn in towards the carpet. 
Shoulders towards your hips. Also, pull them away from your ears. 
so you're not sinking into your shoulders, you're pulling them away from your ears. Two rounds in, six left, you're back to your center. Pick whatever plant style that you want. Because it's good to train impact. 
if you want zero impact, then this is it, which means no jumping. Um, it is high intensity though. Um, women need high intensity training as part of their workouts. They need heavy strength training too. Left arm, hands on knees, take your left arm, reach for the ceiling, turn and face it, and then bring that arm through your body, lie and face it into a thread of the needle. Butt stays in the air, we're gonna stay here for the next 30 seconds. You like my bum? I work hard on it since I think it's kind of facing the camera. Okay, let's do those 30 seconds. And back to the center, right arm up in the air, trying to face it, and bring it through your body, lie down and face it. And again, deep breaths in and out. Hold your pose for as long as you like. I'm just going to move through it just so you have some options. You can always rewatch this. I'll save it onto my Instagram page. Spread your knees apart, turn your toes out. We're going to push our hips straight back and extend our arms overhead. Straight back but not down. So you feel that in a thigh stretch. You struggle with any movement, send me a message. I, I love troubleshooting movements with people. And I also do one-on-one -on -one in person and online personal training and consultations to work through any movement issues. Now we're going to do a knee lunge. Um, my, my left leg is in front. Put my hands beside my foot, keeping that front heel connected to the ground. Let your knee track towards your toes till you feel the stretch, but the front heel doesn't disconnect. Stay here for a few seconds. So yes, definitely eat something in the next two hours um, to help rebuild the muscle that you've damaged. I got a call, um, call question a few weeks ago about how often I exercise, and I exercise, switch sides, four, four to four to five times a week. Um, but I always make sure I have at least two day, two rest days. Rest days are really important. This idea of no days off is just completely stupid because your body needs days off. What you do when you exercise is you damage your muscle, you break it down, and during recovery, your body rebuilds the muscle to be stronger so that you can do more. But if you never make time for recovery, you're just breaking down your muscles, you're wearing down your body, and you're just going to feel tired and you're going to get no benefit from it. There is a lot of strength building that happens in the recovery phase. I'm going to come up into a low squat hold. Get your heels down. If you can't get your heels down in your low squat and you're up on your toes, then take your hands, put them in front of you and send some of that weight into your hands. Use your elbows to push your knees apart. If you can get your heels down, then keep them connected. Um, sit in a prayer pose and use your elbows to push your knees apart. We're stretching out our inner thighs and also our pelvic floor. So I don't want you to be contracting anything in this position. Just take deep inhales, deep breaths in, deep breaths out. But our focus is just relaxing because there's been a lot of contracting, contracting, contracting during the workout. We just want those muscles to relax now. And we're going to slowly roll up our body. Roll us. Slide and end with three deep breaths. As long as you're standing up, you don't feel lightheaded. If you do, give yourself a few seconds at the top just for yourself to feel settled. Spread your feet, inhale through your nose, reach for the ground, exhale through your mouth, reach for the sky for three breaths. And that is all. Thank you for joining me this Wednesday for our live workout. I'll be back next Monday, December 28th. I'm doing a holiday workout training with a bunch of really amazing trainers. So there's going to be different trainers throughout the day and throughout the week um, doing different types of workouts. All on our Instagram pages. If you check my stories, I post about it. And if you check my page, I post about it. So on Monday, December 28th at 11 a.m. MST, not why it's going to be 11 a.m. Mountain Time. I'm going to go live with a postnatal strength and conditioning workout, like postnatal friendly strength and conditioning workout. 
and on the Thursday, December 31st at 1pm I'm going to go live with a Get Lit on New Year's Eve workout, a low impact interval training with high impact options workout, One again sorry, 11am on the 31st, so 11am on the 28th, 11am on the 31st, have an amazing weekend and I'll see you next week.